you know, I know a little bit about you guys, and I know we've chatted back and forth a little bit, but um, if you want to just like kind of give a rundown, like if people don't know you, uh, what you guys do, kind of your background and how you got to what you're doing today. I know you guys are a husband wife team. We're going to touch on that later too. But um, yeah, just the elevator pitch of the Harringtons. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, so my name is Tyler Harrington. Uh, my wife, Ashley, and I, we make up the Harringtons. We are a, a husband and wife filmmaking team. We live here in Richmond, Virginia. And yeah, we do this full time. We've been doing it full time now for probably about three years. Um, and yes, yeah, so we just make we make wedding films. And as Bobby was kind of t- talking about, we we were doing photography for a long time. And this year actually was our first year of just doing filmmaking and nothing else. So uh, we're going to go more into that as we kind of as we kind of go along in the conversation. But yeah, so basically kind of like my little bit of like my backstory is I started doing photography when I was in high school. Uh, I took, you know, a bunch of photography classes in high school. And when I went to college, I didn't really know what I wanted to major in. Uh, I didn't really love any classes or anything like that, but I knew I loved photography. So I actually signed up to be a photojournalism major because I thought that that would, you know, fulfill my desire to do photography. Um, it did not. Uh, I eventually ended up switching my uh degree over to graphic design Um, but I was always had a camera and I was always taking photography classes through the art school at WVU and all that kind of stuff and like a lot of people I had a buddy who was like hey I'm getting married I can't afford to hire a a real photographer I know that you have a nice camera could you photograph my wedding so that's kind of how that all started that was in 2010 I guess Um, and then from there, it just kind of started snowballing. I had a lot of friends who were getting engaged, a lot of friends who were getting married. So it was just kind of like perfect timing. And everything kind of just kept rolling. And before I knew yeah. it, it was starting to become like this big part of my life without me even having realized what had happened. And um, yeah, so I was just kind of doing that. I was trying to save up money for a ring. This is an, you know, an easy <laughs> easy way to make money on the side. Um, so easy. So I was, you know, it's like I was no going work to school at all. and I was working and I was and doing all this stuff. What's that? So it's so easy. It, it's like no work. Right. Well, for a college kid, they're like, I'm like, they're like, oh, yeah. show up and, and take pictures, and they're like, we'll like, give you five hundred dollars. Yeah, no. Heck, I'm like, heck yeah, I'd have to work a whole month at the stupid, you know, frozen yogurt <laughs> shop to make that money. Like, sure, I'd love, I'd yeah. love to do that. So next thing I know, I'm like missing football games to go shoot weddings and all this stuff. Um, and meanwhile, so my wife, uh, we, we have this weird like two year gap in our education. So she graduated in three years and I graduated in five. Okay. Uh, so we had this weird gap. And in that year, um, so she's like traveling all around the world doing all this stuff. I'm still in school. Um, long story short, so we eventually we, you know, we get engaged and um, we get married and we had never really talked about the business before. It was always just sort of this thing that I did. It was again, it was a sort of this side thing that was slowly kind of becoming bigger than I knew what to do with. Um, but it was always just sort of there. When we got married, uh, about four weeks after our wedding, I had a, booked a wedding in the Bahamas. And nice. she was like, you're not leaving me, your new wife of four weeks, you're not leaving me here while you go to the Bahamas by yourself. <laughs> She's like, I'm coming with you. So I was like, all right, fine. Well, if you're going to come, then you're going to shoot. Because she had a little bit of photography background. She she, you know, had a camera and she'd done some stuff. Nothing really like professional, but she knew her way around a camera. So that's kind of how it started. So she came with me to that wedding in the Bahamas and... We came home, we were like, this is like, this is a good idea. Maybe we should do this kind of thing more often. Um, and then from there, we kind of just started doing it together. We were both doing other stuff. I was working full time. She was going to school and nannying and doing all this other stuff. Um, and it just kind of has evolved from there. And uh, like I said, we went, both went full time about three years ago. And uh, yeah, and now here we are. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. And you guys are in, so you're in Virginia. Yes, we're okay. in Richmond, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sweet. Um, very cool. So, okay. Um, so like I said, we're going to get into the husband and wife thing. I think that's like a big thing that like we share and a lot of other people, you know, share that too, especially in the photo side. But I'm um, talking about that. I'm going to give like a little bit of a background on kind of like my backstory. I'm going to try and keep it pretty short. Um, yeah, no, like, for sure. I'm just going to go up too. on YouTube too. So like, I don't think I've ever actually talked about how we got to where we are today and whatever, yeah. but I feel like it's important. Everybody's a little bit different, but yeah. So kind of similar, like, um, you know, I started in, I, in high school, I started shooting actually for a company. Um, we had this cool, like thing where you could skip a month of school and shadow somebody that, you know, was in a field you're interested in. So I just got to like go make videos for a month and not go to school. And it was great. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that worked out super well. And then I ended up basically working for them for like two years. Um, a great guy, like totally my mentor, uh, was super like 
open about everything, like no question was off the table, which has been like a big influence in kind of how we um, just like do like the YouTube stuff, like tutorials and also like interns and stuff like that, which has been really awesome. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, I went to school in, you know, out in California. So this is like, this is 10 years ago. Um, right. I started shooting for some companies out there and shooting for myself more. Um, kind of like what you were saying too, like I was in school and I was like, oh, well, you know, like, well, I don't know, I could go do this on Saturday or I could go shoot a wedding for this company and, you know, whatever. Right, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, it worked out well. And uh, yeah, kind of, like you said, it just kind of snowballed and eventually, like, I don't know, eight years, seven years ago or something, it was just kind of full time. Like it just was, um, which is great. Uh, and then as far as like the husband wife aspect of it, we were kind of kind of similar timeline like we were i think we were engaged uh and micah who was also in school in california but she was a few hours north of me came down um to visit for a weekend or something and uh i was booked for a wedding and i was like well like she like did photo she hadn't really done video but i was like well you're just gonna come along like they didn't hire two shooters it was just one so it was just like a bonus for them and right you yeah. know for the couple i wasn't like shortchanging them with somebody who had never run a video camera and uh right. yeah she just like she loved it and then kind of again just snowballed from there and so that was yeah like i think seven years ago or something so i think micah just finished up her seventh season shooting with me and then this has been we're just wrapping up my 10th season so wow that's um, awesome yeah so it, i mean i don't know roller coaster ride for sure it's an interesting industry but it's great so um so yeah okay so like one of the things that i See, especially on the photo side, and that might be just because we're working with photographers more than, you know, other videographers at an event, but like the husband wife thing, I know that's been huge for us. Um, like I love, it, it's very rare that I need to shoot with somebody else. And like, you can just tell right away, like you're just not on the same page. Whereas like, I swear with Micah, like there are times where we'll like do like hand signals across the ceremony or something, you know, and like, she'd be like, Oh right. yeah, no, I'll go get that slider shot or something, you know, something crazy. And it's like, I don't know, stuff like that. So how do you feel like, I, just like the, the growth and the progress that you guys have had? Like, I feel like that's been essential. Um, I know like everybody does it different, but um, can you talk a little bit about kind of that husband and wife aspect and um, yeah, no, for sure. So, the husband wife thing is perfect. Like it's great for us. Like you said, having the, the consistent second shooter week after week after week yeah. is really nice because you do start to grow those tendencies and you start to kind of know, you don't have to explain it every time. You are always know, okay, you're going to be in charge of this. I'm in charge of that, all that kind of stuff. But for us, the biggest difference has been in the, like the business side, the behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff. Cause when I started oh. doing this, I was following photographers like Caitlin James and Jasmine Starr and back in the day, like you know, all those girls with the really big blog. So that's who I was following and kind of trying to emulate my business after. Yeah. But I'm this like 20 something year old college dude living in Morgantown, <laughs> West Virginia, you know, and I'm like trying to blog the way that they blog and like talk the way that they talk, but it's just like, not, that's not, not quite who I am. And it's not like my, my jam. That's not really like natural for me. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like trying to talk about the shoes and like the emotions and like all this stuff. And it's just like, you could tell it's, I'm more technical. I'm more just like, I love getting the shots and all that, all those types of things. So when Ash came into the business, that whole side of our business is really what started to change and really started to grow into a, into like the personal kind of business that we run now. Yeah. And I was trying it before. It just wasn't something very natural to me, but that is perfectly fits right with right within her skill sets. So yeah, on a wedding day, obviously having the same second shooter, having Ash there every weekend is great. But for me and for us, the biggest change that we definitely saw was in the interaction, the social media, the blogging, just all the kind of like back end business stuff, the client experience that we can offer our brides because Ash brings something to the table that I just never really could. Totally. Um, so I know like one of the things I mentioned to you that I also want to talk about is your guys kind of social media and your blogging is a part of that. Cause that's something, yeah. that's something that like we don't do. I mean, we blog like a wedding if it mm -hmm. fits our style and our brand and whatever we'll do it. But like, that's not something I see a lot of people doing. And that's something like you said that I see some of the bigger photographers doing and I just haven't really found the way to do that. I don't think a lot of people have for the video, but you guys have. Um, so we're going to go into that in a little bit, but um, so I know like one of the things you guys probably get this all the time where it's like, oh, like, oh, you know, I could never work with my husband or wife or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. All the time, like especially non-wedding industry, but even mm -hmm. within it. Um, crazy. But do you guys find so like one of the things that we found is or like that we've 
kind of divvied up tasks based on our strong point. And I think that you were kind of getting at that. Like there yeah. were things that you weren't able to naturally do, like talk about the shoes and some designer dress that you fell in love with or whatever. Right, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know like you said, Ash's kind of like brought up that side and being like, almost like being that feminine presence too to counteract sure. like, you know, I don't know, like the male presence of like gear and tech and you know, whatever, which we're right, the exact yeah, yeah. same way. like. I do you know, like I do all the research for gear because I love it, you know, and Micah hates right. it. So, um, right. But do you, have you guys found like as far as the different roles, like do you guys overlap in a lot of different roles? Are there some things that like only you do or only she does? And how have you kind of split that up and um, seen? Yeah, that. Yeah, so we definitely have a pretty clear distinction between who's responsible for what. So Ashley, like I said, handles almost all of the back end stuff of the business. So all the blogging, all the social media, she handles, um, you know, all the client interaction, pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, I do, just, like you said, everything technical. So as far as, you know, like uh, all, you know, most of the shooting, I'm, you know, I is like the first shooter role in um, for all the different shoots, uh, as well as all the editing. Uh, I, since I have a graphic des design background, I'm, you know, always making different things for whatever, you know, Facebook promo we're running or email blasts we're doing or all, you know, those types of things. Um, as well as like a lot of the promo work side that uh, you know a lot of that falls under me because most of that is you know shooting and editing and planning and stuff like that. Um, but then the things that we kind of do that maybe cross over would be you know obviously like meeting up with potential brides and grooms things like that. We definitely collaborate as far as generating ideas for blog posts and for you know email email stuff and, and sort of like overall strategy stuff. Um, but for the most part, you know like I said, Ash is handling sort of all the behind the scenes stuff, whereas I'm handling like everything else, like all the technical editing, mostly, I mean, honestly, yeah. it feels like all I ever do is edit because yeah. I feel like, I was going to say, uh, I'm that's probably sort of like this, taking you the away world from that we want to live in. So. Um, yeah, no, that's like, I, I feel like we kind of split a similar way. Um, there's some stuff that we're a little bit different, but yeah, like there's stuff we overlap, but we, we definitely have our distinct like roles. And I think that's been like over, it's just over time. Like you kind of fall into it and you figure it out. Um, and you know right. it, like, it's based off of strong points like micah is you know great at whatever and i'm great at something else and you know so yeah like client interaction or um you know we'll get into the photo side in a little bit because we're going to talk about that um, yeah. that's a big part of this but um yeah whereas like i said like you know researching gear like i enjoy it and i have right. done it for longer so it just makes sense to do that um right right interesting yeah i feel like i don't know it's just always it's always cool to get a take from somebody else who's especially in the video side you know as a husband and wife team um yeah although, and that's one thing i think that coming from the photography world like i said that's where i got my start and that's yeah. where we lived for like a really long time and then bringing that sort of like photography philosophy into the video world is something that we've kind of has been good for us and as we kind of talk more through the different transitions and stuff that's been one thing that i've definitely been able to notice is taking that sort of i think i feel like just photographers have sort of like got it figured out it's become almost like this like the status quo for photographers to have the client experience and you know sending gifts and just sort of the way that they do things and running very personal businesses yeah and if you listen to most photographers talk not all but like the ones at least the ones that kind of in our circle of you know people who we kind of like run with they don't ever talk about gear. They don't care yeah. about gear. It doesn't really matter. They all, I mean, a lot of the photographers we know shoot with the same camera, the same lenses, the same whatever, maybe with a little variation here and there. Um, but they talk about, I mean, it's business and client experience and all those other types of things are way more important than the editing or than the, than the gear the and tech. all that kind of stuff, which I think is so opposite for filmmakers. Filmmakers were so, you know, focus on the gear and which I love talking about gear. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like I can talk about gear all day long, but, um, <laughs> You know, that's one thing that we've definitely tried to bring over from the photography world into the video world. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna respond to that real quick. I just wanna, one of the comments was about if this is gonna be saved, it will. Um, it'll go up on YouTube for sure. I don't know if Facebook Live saves it, maybe? We'll see. It probably, I mean, you have the option to, yeah. All right, well, if I have the option to at the end, then it will. Uh, but Perfect. for sure it'll be on YouTube and we'll post a link later um, to that. Also, yeah. like, if you guys have questions, I'm trying not to like read the text while talking because I, I definitely want this to be a conversation. But if you're watching, you do have questions, post them up. Um, I'll try and scroll through at the end and hit any that, that we can um, yeah, towards the end of it. But yeah, okay, so one of the big things 
Um, and so we didn't come from the photo side, but I think having Micah in from the beginning and having Micah kind of running in some of those same crowds and just being in tune with a lot of those, um, like Caitlin James and like different photographers that were kind of in that, in that crowd. Like we've been mm -hmm. so big, like every decision we make, um, at least big ones, maybe not like super tiny ones that are insignificant, but big ones, like our, our big thing that we always track it back to is, is this helping our client experience? Um, oh, yeah. So I love that you say that because that's like, I do think that's something that's lost, especially in the film making community. I think part of that is that it's, it's compared to photo, like I definitely think there's like a, it's a male dominated community compared to probably more of a female dominated community. Yeah, definitely. Um, but that's like, that's huge. Like, I, yeah, like I said, like everything that we do tracks back to is, is ultimately benefiting our clients um, that's, that's been a big reason. I know like we switched this year to uh, full day coverage in all of our collections. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah. that was like scary because I mean, we re re revamped like everything, um, as far as what, what our collections were made up of, but, uh, you know, it was scary in that like, Oh, well, what if we have to stay for 12 hours or something and we don't really right. want to. But our whole thing was like, well, in the past people would book us for eight hours or something because our packages were hourly. And then at the end of the night, we have to be like, hey, I realize everything's running behind and like eat and like, you know, do you want to pay us X amount more to stay? And even if they love their video, even if they loved us, that's like a negative check mark on the client experience. And so right, that right, was a right. big, you know, I mean, you could go back and forth all day on whether or not you should do full day coverage. And there's definitely <laughs> different, like different perspectives and they're all valid. Like ultimately, you know, whatever works. Yeah, no, but as long as that's your like heart behind it, I think then that's obviously, if you can have the attitude towards everything you do, I think that'll, that's what really sets people apart. Yeah. In, especially in the video world. For sure. Um, interesting. Okay. So kind of got through the husband and wife stuff. Um, yeah. Let's go into, um, so like the, one of the big reasons, so I, I heard you and Matt um, and Craig, um, the wedding film school team, wedding film school yeah. tribe. Um, so I, I think I watched, I don't know if it was live or it was just later or whatever, but I was watching you guys chat and uh, I don't even honestly know if there was like a, like a distinct purpose of that chat. Not really. I, like yeah. it was great. It was like a ton of purposes. It was like 20 purposes in one. Yeah. Um, but I know one of the things that you were that you had brought up at, at one of those points was how you guys, like you said earlier, you were in photo and were you doing only photo or were you doing both? Uh, no, it's pretty much been about half and half ever since like ever since I graduated and we kind of started doing this like yep. legitimately or you know like seriously. It's been about half of our weddings every year were photo, half of them were video. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and side note, have you ever done? Have, did you ever do both? At, at like the same we moment. have we've probably yeah. done that like maybe five or six times like okay. ever okay. Um, but it, it was always super stressful for yeah. me yeah uh, okay so like the big thing that really piqued my interest and one of the things that I wanted to like just chat through and hear kind of your side of things and like share how we came to like our decision was that we kind of went like complete opposite on this thing and I feel like just yeah. from I mean this is the first time that we've like actually spoken like right. with voices and not text. Um, right. So you're all witnesses. But, uh, but you know, like we, we went through like the exact opposite thing. So you in the last year dropped photo completely right. and are going yep. only video. And we've essentially kind of done the opposite where this was, it wasn't just last year. It was maybe like two-ish years ago, a little bit more. We've looked at uh, really ramping up our photo and trying to do both. Um, right. So I would love to hear, like, like I'm sure I'll come up with questions as we chat through it, but what was kind of your mindset and, like, what was, like, the final, like, kick to make you be like, no, we're, like, photos out of here, we're done? Yeah, so that's, it's been, it's definitely been a journey. Um, like I said, I started in photo, and photo is always kind of, like, my, like, my first true love. Yeah. And um, kind of fell into the video thing. I don't have any formal training in, in video. I've just watched every single still motion tutorial <laughs> I think they've ever created. Um, and as well as just like watched hours of YouTube videos and stuff. So um, it was always, again, if video was sort of just like secondary thing that just sort of like fell into the mix. Um, and we were do, like, doing half and half and we love doing both. I always just yeah. said, you know, I like being able to do both. I like having the option of doing both. 
And it was really scary for me to think about dropping photo because, you know, like that's half of our income. That's half of our weddings. How can we just stop doing what half of our work? What are we going to yeah. do to replace that huge chunk of our income? So it was always just sort of like back and forth, back and forth thing. And we have a ton of friends um, in the industry who are photographers. And we just got, we we're just kind of getting lots of different feedback from them. And a lot of them were saying, you guys need to seriously just do video. If you guys were just videographers, I could refer you to every single client, like no matter what. They're like, but if you, because you guys do photo and video, it's like a little bit confusing. And, um, you know, we don't want to send, I don't know if they necessarily said this to us, but, you know, like, yeah. we don't want to send clients to you who you might like, not steal, but like they'd be like, oh, they shoot photo too. Like, let's just book them for photo, yeah. right? So, it just be, kind of became this thing, and it was almost like an identity crisis where people in the industry, like our friends and everybody who's like in the wedding world, kind of knew us as videographers, but they're like, oh yeah, but I guess they also do photo, and it just wasn't a very clear, clear yeah. message. Um, and in the area that we live, there's just so many photographers, and I'm sure it's kind of the tr same everywhere. There's just so many photographers, photographers everywhere, and... Um, yeah, we just, I don't know, and it was it was a couple, it was like a combination of different things. There was no necessarily like one like crystal clear moment where we were like, this is what we have to do. Yeah. Um, but we, we just started really enjoying the process of video more and enjoying the process of photo less. And uh, I think like the biggest hesitation for me, like I said, was more of an identity crisis than anything else. Because I'd always, ever since I was, you know, 15, was like, oh, I'm Tyler, I'm a photographer. I'm Tyler, yeah. I'm a photographer. Like that's how I like... Who have you to are. find myself but like that's how i you know for such a long time that's who i was and to like completely pivot out of that and say like oh we're not doing that anymore we're just going to do video um but we actually we got some business coaches and we we're just kind of trying to you know kind of reassess where we were at and we decided you know like this this is it we just this is what we need to we need to just like bite the bullet we just need to do it um and it's been it's been a really great decision for us it's been about a full year now since we kind of like made like the official okay. announcement or whatever yeah um whatever that means so this year we had two photo weddings at the very beginning of the year that were just like left over from last year and then everything else has been video so um yeah and i can kind of go more into like the details of how that went but i don't know if you want to explain sort of your thought process from going the opposite way yeah first yeah it'd probably be good to like take it one a step at a time um yeah but yeah so basically like a, a lot of our um our decision lined up, so we moved, we were based in Santa Barbara, California for six years or something. Um, and then we moved to Minneapolis, which is where we're both from, so we moved like back home or whatever. Um, two, two years ago, just, just over two, two years ago, I think. Um, and so when we were in California, like one of, the thing, one of the big things that I always heard was like, oh, you know, yeah, I don't want to offer photo because I don't want to, step on like photographers toes like I want to I don't want to like get rid of those referrals and kind of like what what you were saying mm -hmm. um and so we didn't like we just we did photo for other stuff we did like an like randomly we'd have people who were like I want to book you for photo and we'd be like oh do you mean like video and they'd be like right. no like I want to I want to book you for photo and it's like well we don't shoot like wedding photo like it would be like right, 10 right, conversations right. like 10 back and forth to be like I think you want us for video, so let's talk about video. And they're like, no, like, I love your Instagram photo. Like, can you shoot our wedding? And I'm like, Gah. but like those actually, like we did. So that was like our first wedding. This was like a while ago, our first photo wedding. And they ended up being like amazing clients. And we've done like tons of shoots with them and they're awesome. But like, I remember that and I was like, I really think you mean video, like right. moving <laughs> pictures. That's what you want, right? Because there's nothing on our website. And, you know, we never pushed it like after that, even though like the wedding went great. And a big mm -hmm. reason was that we were like, well, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to hurt any kind of relationship that we have with photographers. And then, like you said, kind of the identity thing, like we don't want somebody to come to our website and see like, oh, here's a really cool wedding video, but oh, here's some wedding photos and here's like a commercial shoot and like just this mishmash, right. you know, of just like, what is this? You know, who is this company? They're a little too whatever for me. Um, and then, you know, kind of in, in tune with our, our move, but also like as we built up to our move, which wasn't like a super, like it wasn't sudden, but it also wasn't like super planned. It wasn't like two years in advance or anything, but we had just mm -hmm. been doing more photo, not really for weddings, but other stuff, um, mostly uh, by my wife, Micah, um, like seniors and family shoots and stuff like that. And stuff that we felt like didn't really interfere with a lot of the wedding photographer friends that we had. Um, right. 
And then with our move, like I think we got a couple personal um, connections who wanted to hire us and some of them like didn't have the budget for photo and video, but they really wanted us there. And so we shot photo and part of that and then part of kind of going forward, this is, you know, about two years ago and saying, well, maybe we should think about like really offering this um, was looking back. Like we look back through our um, like our couples over the past couple of years and where they had come from. And like we had so like we had so many photographers that we loved working with. But for whatever reason, like we just didn't get referrals um, like mm. a lot of the. I like I think some of it was budget wise um like we we weren't like like we were pretty closely priced for video to what they were for photo and I think a lot of people like I think a lot of videographers would probably agree with me like a lot of people sometimes struggle with that in like paying the same amount which you know what that's a separate chat but right oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you know so like we weren't always able to shoot the same weddings kind of like the people that we were close with and sometimes we did and it was awesome um, but yeah, and like a lot of times too, like they would get asked about video, but it was, you know, like a month before the wedding, we were already booked. So like a lot of, we mm -hmm. would get a lot of referrals, but for a variety of reasons, like they wouldn't turn into book referrals very often. And so we kind of looked at it and we were like, you know, for we're video. Not actually for video. Yeah. yeah from yeah. photographers. So we, we felt like we maybe weren't going to actually lose. Like, it's not like, Oh shoot, half of our business is going to go out the window because these photographers aren't going to refer us anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, that was definitely part of it, I think, for us, the whole, like, photographer referral yeah. thing. But honestly, I mean, we do get a lot of referrals from photographers, which we which we love. But I think for us, the biggest thing is, like you were saying, is the whole special, specialization thing. Yeah. And how if you sort of specialize in one thing, you can charge a premium yep. for that thing. And, you know, I think that, I mean, people would say, oh, you're specialized in weddings. Like, isn't that enough? Um, and, I mean, it can be. And there's definitely people who, I mean, obviously, you're an example. You can do both. Yeah. Um, but just for us, we just... And, like there's a lot of factors of just wanting to be able to focus on the one thing yeah able to focus on video and just really like pour everything into that and pour like our like everything that we have into our couples and into all that sort of thing instead of sort of trying to split our our seo and our blogging and yeah. like all that sort of stuff just be splitting it between the two um and we honestly it just got to a point where like we're better at video than we are at photos like yeah we feel way more comfortable with our ability to deliver like something that we're really really proud of for what we're On charging video for side. video yeah and our photos are good but they're not like i don't know for me i felt like they're always good and very technically sound but like just the way that the we came about them like it wasn't necessarily what, what people were looking for and it wasn't as like mind blowing as like our video work was. Yeah. Um, so we'd get response and people liked their photos and they, you know, it was, we were they doing a them. good job, yeah. but we weren't like blowing their minds like we were with our videos. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it too. We're like, we just feel like this is more a kind of like what we're called to do and sort of where we're like more gifted in this area. For sure. That definitely like hits home with us. I know one of the things that we've like, like we're not afraid to say like art, like I say the same thing. Like I think our photos are, are good. I think we do a really good job. I think every, like we've never had anybody who's unhappy. It's never anything like that. Um, but like, I feel like our photos, like there are plenty of photographers who can do photos on the same level as us. And right, there exactly. aren't as many videographers who can do videos on the same level as us. Exactly. And, um, and obviously in the videographer market, there's so much less saturated. So oh, yeah. It allows us, with our customer experience and the product we're able to deliver, allows us to stand out way more in the video world than we were in the photo world. And being split between the two was just sort of muddying that that yeah. image. But now, if I, we feel like when people talk about us, like, oh, the Harringtons, like they're the videographers like, that you want. Like, if you get a videographer, you need the Harringtons. Yeah. There's none of that like wishy-washy. You're like, ah, eh, but they also do like photo and you know, like none of that. It's like very, you know video like the Harringtons they do great videos and this is like their style and like if you want this that's who you need to yeah have, that kind of thing it's like um top of the top like super great word association with video right like exactly best video um, yeah and i mean it's one of the things i don't i don't know if people were saying before we were offering photo and video i mean i feel like they're still kind of saying that yeah um just but wasn't now it's like even like more clear you yeah. know for sure that makes sense yeah i know like so one of the things that we've like we've made this transition where we're offering photo but like if you take a look at our website you don't like 
see it anywhere. It's so mostly like, video. Yeah, I did. I looked at it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, good. You've, you've done your research. Uh, <laughs> I get a little bit of research. But yeah, so like that's one of the things where like we're, like we are doing photo and like our Instagram is a lot of photos still because it's way easier to have content that way to post than yeah. like oh, yeah. video. Oh my goodness. Um, but like. Yeah, like our website really doesn't have a whole lot about shooting. Our main site doesn't, our blog, I think. Or no, our website has a little bit, but like our blog, if we shoot a photo wedding and we get around to actually blogging it, then it will be up there. If we shoot a photo and video, like at the same wedding, which I'll get into in a minute, so don't anybody mm -hmm. like kill me before I get into that. Um, you know, that it will show a few photos from the day too, but like we're really not pushing okay. it. So that was one of the things you said, like you didn't want to muddy stuff and like, I feel like that's kind of been our like counter to that a little bit is like we're not really SEOing like we're we're mainly booking photo off of like referrals from other photo weddings kind of right uh, we honestly we, so we stopped like so we just this past year we actually like stopped actually officially yeah offering it but we stopped like talking about photo a long time ago yeah we stopped <laughs> blogging about it I mean, obviously we blogged the weddings but yeah, we stopped yeah. like if I'd write a blog post I wasn't writing you know, five Lightroom tips, it was always five Premiere tips or yeah. whatever. Like I started transitioning everything we talked about additional on top of the actual like wedding to mostly video to try and kind of sway that. We even raised our prices for photo thinking that would deter people from booking us, but it didn't really work. People <laughs> were still booking us, which again, I think goes back to the client experience being yeah. way more important than anything else. Cause again, like you were saying, like our photo work is good, but it was never great. Like we weren't the best photographers in the state or like anything like that by, by a long shot. But people heard about from other people, the experience yeah. that they had with us and just what it was like to work with us. And that I think is what kept us getting more and more photography bookings, um, which is great. And you know, which is like something I think to, to definitely note, but we'd rather have like the combination of the two of like the amazing experience and what we consider like a really, really great product. Yeah. That to me just makes it that much easier to book. And then you can raise your prices even higher. Cause we also kind of plateaued price wise. Like we were like, we, I don't know if we can like push it much higher yeah. than where we're at. That's one. Of, so that's like kind of our last reason was like we restructure our, our collections a lot, which essentially like, I'm not gonna like super get into it, but our base collection like went from a two song to a one song highlight. Mm -hmm. So, and kept the same price and kept our California prices for Minneapolis. So that right. allowed us to raise like everything else by quite a lot. Um, and we kind of felt like, and that was, that was like when we, or no, that was, like halfway through last year or something. So we kind of felt like you said, like we might, like we don't know and we might have kind of plateaued. Like we really like working in that, um, that market that we are reaching in those prices. Um, and I'm sure, you know, at some point we'll, we'll raise them again. That's just the way things go. But yeah. the photo and video was another way. So like, we're actually like actively trying, like we would never like steal a photo wedding from somebody. Like if somebody, if we're meeting for video and we ask them if they have a photographer, like we don't say a word if, if they have one right. that we yeah, yeah, yeah. do photo. Um, right. But like we are really trying to book photo and video for the same wedding. Um, we've done like, I don't know, a bunch of them so far and we're trying to do more, you know, for next year. And part of that being like, that's like one of the few ways, at, at least in the very near future that we see being able to like greatly increase profits because you know we're only booking 25 a year we won't take on more than that and if we do photo and video at all of them i mean that's doubling our, our right. income so so that was okay the, another reason why switching to just video made more sense for us is because we never really had the option to offer the full like the full video and photo experience for yeah. the same wedding so basically so i was like the first shooter for yeah. photo and for video okay so if we were to hire, so if someone were to book us to do both, we were never able to do like a full photo package and a full video package. What we were offering, if we did both, the few few times that we did it, is we were doing a highlight film for video, you know, okay. three to five minutes, yeah. and that was it, and then a full photo package. Okay. So basically what we would do is I would solo shoot the photos, and I would just kind of shoot the whole thing, and that would also do a lot of the, like, the creative shots for video, yeah. so like all the slider stuff, all the gimbal stuff, all the... Dang. Most of that <laughs> stuff. And then also like miking everybody and like doing all the normal, like setting all the cameras and doing all that stuff. So I, I was doing like yeah. double duty. So mentally for me, it was super, super oh stressful. Gosh. And then Ash would do a lot of the shooting, like her normal sort of stuff that she would shoot on yep. a wedding day. And then we'd hire a third, like a, another second videographer who wasn't, who probably couldn't solo shoot a wedding by, yeah. their, by themselves. 
but between the two of them and you know that person ash and then me we'd have enough video stuff to make a good highlight film yeah and then i'm just like solo shooting photo and then ash obviously would like jump over and help me with like family formals like we normally do for photo like all those types of things but it just became super super successful and it wasn't that beneficial for us because we couldn't offer the full package of both yeah and then if we were to hire another like if we were to hire a first video shooter that always just didn't seem like worth it to us or without like ripping somebody off yeah because at that point they should just hire that videographer pay them their normal prices have the contract with them do all that stuff it didn't make sense for us to be like the middleman and like book them for photo and video and then contract out another first shooter and like you know all that stuff so that part of it we never had the luxury of like really doing that and yeah we made more money off that wedding technically by doing adding the highlight film and all that stuff but we were never never able to do it so for you guys are you both lead shooting for photo and for video and then do you hire one second or two or how do you guys do that yeah so when we do it we do um so generally it, it actually kind of depends on so we have like a, a, a few second shooters that we trust um and so mm-hmm. it actually kind of depends which uh second shooter which, available. yeah which second shooter we end up with um but but for pretty much everyone i'm shooting only video uh, when we do both. Um, and then generally, like we've just found it's a lot easier to find a second shooter for photo than video. Um, sure, yeah. Like the oh, yeah. pool is just way bigger and finding somebody who's high quality is just easier to find. And um, and we've worked with them a bunch of times already, so, you know, it's easier. So, so generally what happens, like our second shooter is kind of lead photo um, and then Micah is mm-hmm. doing like kind of both so photo and video yeah but like we do have limitations on what they get on the video side so like we like normally we have a one song collection and we have a two song like as far as the highlight film goes and Mm -hmm. when we're doing both we'll only do the one song right um, which is about what half of our weddings are anyway like even if they don't book photo too but um, yeah so like like, like, full ceremony and full speeches and stuff like that yeah we also do that um you still do yeah we still do that so like i can shoot most of that um, so like Micah's shooting both photo and video, but she's definitely shooting more photo. Uh, okay. Like the video is really like, you know, at the ceremony, if I need a man camera up front or something where, you know, I can't be in two places at once. Um, to and help then you also, out. Set of hands, yeah. yeah. Or like, you know, toasts. It's like, I'd rather have her run a video camera cause the other, like, you don't need that many photos for toasts. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like she can run the video camera while I'm get making sure audio is you know, at the right levels and stuff like that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And she'll shoot like a little bit of, like it depends on the day too. You know, if it's like a super low key schedule, she'll shoot some video, like some creative shots and whatever. But yeah, when you How said- How do you guys do that gear wise? So Are we you have, shooting, I know you do switch to Sony, right? We switch to Sony for video, um, mm-hmm. but for photo, we're, we still shoot Canon. Oh, okay. Um, so you just have your Canon. Yeah, I mean, we just, like, she has two Mark III's. I have the A7S II and the A6500. So I'm basically on those most of the day. Yeah, except, yeah so you just have two, you have two completely separate. Yeah, so and then at no the ceremony, over, yeah. like, our, we'll still run a third camera usually, and that will be a, a 5D Mark III. Um, Got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because it's not worth it to, I don't know. Yeah, that was another big thing that was nice about switching off of photo is we were able to dump all of our photos stuff yeah. so we could, like, sell our flashes and do all that kind of stuff, and then really make all of our gear purchases like a video just conscious. for video. Yeah. Because um, that was a hard thing for a long time, is like, I, it didn't ever make sense for me to justify buying like a video camera, like a C100 or even an A7S or something like that. Yeah. Because I'm like, if I can't use it for for both, you know, it, that's what kept us honestly on Canon for such a long time. Yeah. Um, originally, before we got the C100s, was because like, I, you know, I need to be able to shoot photo and video with the same camera. And there was never really, I mean, Canons were kind of the, best option oh, yeah. for that for, for a sure. long time yeah okay so I, I i want to talk a little bit about that but first okay one of the questions i had since you first started talking so one of the things you said was like sure. when you were 15 or whatever like you were tyler you were a photographer like that's who you were yeah. like that's what you loved so one of the things that i noticed like when i when i started that month-long program or whatever in high school like i was doing video because i loved it right like it was just my jam and as I started doing it for work, like it becomes work, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so have you found, so now that you, and maybe it's not like, maybe you haven't been in the off season long enough or maybe it hasn't been long enough yet, but like, have you found, like one of the things that I lost was like a love for video. Like I still love what I do, but it's still very much work. 
Um, right. And so like w my actually my main thing for starting like the YouTube, like the tutorial stuff and different stuff on YouTube was like I had this conversation with a, a guest at a wedding and, he, and you know how like you're walking around with the camera and they're like, oh, do you, are you shooting video? And it's like, yep, like, you know, whatever. And uh, he was like, oh, no, but I mean, like, do you shoot video like for fun, like not the wedding? And I was like, no, no my, like my gut response, like just my immediate, you know, answer was no, not anymore. And I was like, right. Oh, that's like so depressing. You know? so, <laughs> uh, so that was like a big thing for starting doing like some tutorial and just like fun, more fun stuff. Um, was a big part of that. But I wonder like, have yeah. you found like b photo being like kind of your first true love or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, now that you've switched over to video for work, has that kind of opened up like photo being like a hobby again and something, you know what I mean? Like where you've kind yeah, of taken no, all the chains. Yeah, like, so kind of, yeah, I feel like it, you know, it hasn't like been enough time yet. We've been yeah. so busy with like the off season yeah. or with like in the season. The on season. But I can definitely see that because I definitely felt that way. I should be like, can you bring the camera on vacation so we can like, or we're going to go do whatever. Can you bring the camera? And I was like, oh, like I do not want to bring the camera. Like I do not want to take and edit more photos. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's definitely become more that way. I'm more like thinking about, photos than I might have been before I just got a new you know the iPhone 10 yeah. so like wanting to like take photos and stuff and we went on a we went on a hike last weekend or the weekend before you know I was wanting to take photos and do all this stuff like kind of photography related um yeah it almost feels like we always joke like we're like retired photographers yeah um which I mean we still do photos all the time for Instagram like you were saying and for different product stuff and for you know whatever um so yeah I don't yeah I think it will get back to that point where I like doing photos for fun again. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's been a long time since that's been a thing, like you were saying. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. It'll be interesting to see if it like yeah. comes back. What I do actually, years. what I love shooting is I love shooting things like concerts. I really yeah. love shooting concerts, and I really love shooting sports, cool. um, which are two things that like, you obviously like never get in the in the wedding world. So I do really enjoy shooting those. Like I've had a, I have a couple friends who are in bands, and I went and took photos at you know their concerts and stuff. Just tiny little like local venues and stuff yeah. but that i really do love um and definitely certain parts of photography i definitely still love for sure yeah totally well i just remembered that my camera stopped recording at some point so there's gonna be a, oh. good, a good chunk of only you in this video but that's okay <laughs> um but yeah okay so that's like I, I just think that's so important like one of my big like things in the, over the last two years was like oh gosh now i don't even remember but it was basically like like make sure like don't just don't just love what you do but make sure you do what you love like right. i love what i do for work it's amazing like i'm so glad this is my career but it's important to still enjoy like to still like remember the reasons that you got into it which wasn't like oh, you yeah. probably weren't like i'm gonna i want to make so much money like I'm going to be a wedding, you know, photographer or videographer. Right. So. And that's the thing is I never like had that dream, like being a wedding, anything, wedding photographer, wedding videographer, yeah. that was definitely never my dream. Yeah. When I was 15 and in photo class, like I was never <laughs> thinking like, oh, someday I'm going to photograph weddings. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> like it just never really, it kind of like fell into my lap and it just sort of became a thing. Yeah. And we love it now. It's absolutely, you know, like you said, it's great. We love what we do. And it's just, it's an amazing, like such a unique career and like yeah. life that we get to live. Um, but it was never a dream of mine, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, from well, a, I think a young people, age. So, yeah, yeah I, and I'm with you the same thing with the YouTube stuff. I definitely started YouTube, doing a lot of the YouTube stuff just as a way of making a video that wasn't a wedding, you know, like yeah. editing something else. Um, and I do sometimes wish I just, like, made more stuff and, you know, vlog or, you know, whatever, do those types of things. So I'm, I've been trying to do more and more of those types of projects and stuff. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. That's what the off season is for those projects yeah. <laughs> in theory we'll see a 5,000 percent increase in Harrington videos on YouTube right no I I hope so I've been slapping <laughs> on the on the YouTube I just checked it today for the first time and realized I was like oh I've got like two weeks worth of comments I haven't responded yeah. to because oh. when, when I got a new phone it stopped syncing for some reason so I hadn't oh even, weird huh didn't even know um okay so I like I feel like I don't know I I just wanted to like chat through that Sorry, that's my Drobo update, if anybody can hear that. Uh, you can probably see it too, because it's on my screen. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I just, like, I really wanted to just chat through that. I don't know if you have like anything more to add. I just love, uh, you know, knowing that you guys are like really kind of in a, like, I feel like we're in similar spots in like the industry and being like a husband wife team and like similar age, I'm assuming and stuff like that. And just like, yeah. 
hearing kind of how you guys made your decision and the path that you guys went and then being able to contrast it with like yeah so did. i will say that like so now it's been about it's been one full like season one full year pretty much like i said since we made the switch over to just video and i was it, it was really rough at the beginning we didn't yeah. necessarily time it out that well um we uh, we literally it was like the longest span we've got we've ever gone probably without booking a wedding okay um so our off season last year was pretty brutal <laughs> like it was just rough yeah. um it's you know and that was probably the first time I'd ever had that. Like I said, when, from the first wedding I ever booked up until that point, it all just sort of came very naturally. And I, not that I didn't have to try, but it all just sort of kind of kept organically growing almost seemingly without me doing anything specific. Like, obviously, yeah. I was. I was working really hard. But, it, you know, it just kind of was always growing Happening. and growing and growing. Yeah. And that's the first time we had a long spell of time where we were like, what? what's going on? Like, what? what are we going to do? Like, what's going on? So we started this year with not very many weddings like way less than we needed probably like six or seven or okay. something like that which was the lowest we've ever come into a wedding season with like in a really long time do you have we a... ended up booking a ton of weddings okay. this year um a lot of them last minute a lot of them just like really weird fluky things we worked we booked one four days before the wedding we booked a <laughs> wedding in chicago like five weeks before the wedding um we had one that we booked um, I met the guy on the groom on the dance floor of another wedding <laughs> and his wedding was like four weeks later. He started talking to me about the crane, yeah. asking me some questions because he wanted to take it on his honeymoon. I showed him the same day edit and they were both like, we need to book you. Can we have a card? <laughs> like those types of things where it's just like all these like crazy stories yeah. and stuff. So like not it's been really cool to see how it all kind of came full circle and how it was really hard at the beginning, but like. I think, but now for next year, we have more weddings booked for next year than we've ever had this early. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where it was really hard at first, but I think that by like committing to it, the, that definitely paid off for us. For sure. I think even like, I, I, I talk about this with some other people, like a lot of the local videographers here about how like, I feel like there's so, like year, every year is different for us. Like last year, and, and so maybe part of it was this too, like, Last year, we went into the new year, so like almost a year ago this time, mm -hmm. yeah, like beginning of 2016, we went into the new year, I think with two or three weddings booked, which was like yeah. the lowest we've ever had. And, you know, we, we do like 25 almost every year, and we're going to be like around that number again. Like sometimes it's a little bit lower, but, you know. Right. Um, and we, we like raised same. our price a lot too this year, so like that kind of all evens out. And that's kind of our goal is to maybe shoot a little bit less. But, and then, you know, right now for next year, we have like 12 which like our highest ever. So Right, exactly. And, and part of it was just bad timing. I think you're right. Yeah. I think it was like an industry-wide thing. Yeah. But at the same time, it was really discouraging and we were trying to figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. But I do think that this year has been really good kind of sticking to that, just seeing like the responses we've been getting, being able to streamline our process, kind of just really, being, like I said, being able to like hone in on what we're doing yeah. and doing it really, really well. For sure. And doing that fully for a full year. And we also added like the educational side of our business and all that kind of stuff as yeah. well. So. All those things kind of coming together, but being able to niche all of those down and focus them really just on video has been really, really great. And I'm excited for next year and kind of like where we're going from here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, do I wish we had done it sooner? I don't know. Like, not really. I think that, you know, I think that the timing ended up being good. Yeah. I don't know if we could have done it if we had done it any earlier as far as like... I don't know, it's always hard to say. It's just hard, it's, you know, obviously, like, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. Like, oh, we should have done this years ago. <laughs> we would have been, like, way further ahead. But I don't think so. I don't think something like this, there's a right or a wrong time to do it. But yeah. we definitely don't regret it. That's, totally. you know, a year later, that's for sure. 